Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Episode 8 of The Mitten on Knitting. There's 134 days left till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, um, there's a couple of things happening over on our Ravelry board. Uh, Of course, we've got the uh, Sock Along or a Short Thread is going on, Um, so stop by and show off your sock, be it uh, ankle or knee-high or higher if you're that daring we'd love to see it um and that's in the sock along or short thread i've also got the um festival frocks thread open and that's a contest thread that's an announced contest um and the rules for entering are participate in the thread and post a picture of your festival frock and the fine print frocks are the items you will wear at the festival not necessarily your knit sweater not necessar- not necessarily created by you not necessarily clothing but keep it clean um <laughs> cuz we are family friendly here uh the prize will be the Rhinebeck sweater book um either a e-copy or hard copy whichever you prefer um so that started now, and it's going to run until September 25th, and uh, we'll announce the winner on the September 27th podcast. Um, as to how the winner will be cho- chosen, I have a poll up, uh, either random number generator, most likes, or the general delightfulness based on the whim of me, the mitten. So um, place your... Place your vote, um, put up your picks, and uh, take take a chance. Maybe maybe you'll end up with a really nice book. I think the Rhinebeck sweater book is really great. It's got uh, really lovely uh, patterns in there, and it's gotten really excellent reviews. So um, that's it for Loose Threads. What's fit in the mitten this week? Well... The week started out kind of cool, which was, upon reflection, pretty lovely. Uh, So, wool socks, um, lots of uh, happy toes there. And uh, I was wearing the um, Jared Flood scarf in the office uh, because they had the air conditioning turned up so high. It was just icy cold, so that was nice to have with me, as well as uh, still using it for my pillow on the train for my little naps, and uh, got to wear my Rhinebeck 2015 sweater a couple of times at the office, uh, just to keep me extra warm. But by the end of the week, it had reached into the 90s, and it was hot, and it was humid, and it was unbearable. Um... So stayed with the wool socks, and they did as advertised. They kept my feet nice and dry and comfortable and not hot at all. And um, so I really appreciated that. I I hope to remember that because I always have a little bit of doubt, you know, is it really going to keep my, my feet uh, comfortable? And it did. Uh, the, the wool really works much better than the cotton. Uh, so, totally enjoyed wearing my my hand-knit socks this week, and uh, they stayed with me. Of course, um, now that it's in the 90s, uh, I really don't have... Uh, <laughs> I, I really won't be wearing the sweaters or anything outside, but it'll cool off in a few days, I'm sure. We'll get pounded by some rainstorm come through and uh, temperatures will go back down, but May is always a little hot and humid around these parts. So that's what's been fitting the mitten. What have I been knitting? Well, I've been knitting on the socks of many heels and uh, the Rhinebeck 2016 sweater. Um, 
a little bit more of what went on with the knitting of them in dough. Um, but I'm pleased to say that I was able to make progress on both fronts, a, a couple of inches on the socks and a couple of inches on the sweater. Um, so, yay! Uh, I made it through the barrier and am pushing forward. So that's what I've been knitting. So what have I been spinning this week? Well, nothing on the wheel. It's just been sitting in its little corner, looking all pretty and, and tempting and everything, but I really haven't had time to pull it out and uh, just dedicate any real time aside from my 15 minutes a day. Um, so I've only got, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe another 40 yards spun of merino on that. Um, nothing nothing to talk about. Um, on the drop spindle, though, I've been bringing that with me on the train. Uh, so I've been doing a couple of yards a day on that. And that's going to be for the uh, competitions at Rhinebeck for the singles. And I put in, uh, I'm going to be putting in 40 yards on the drop spindle and 40 yards on the spinning wheel so I can get those judged and see how I've been doing with that. So uh, a little bit of spinning going on, but not too terribly much. And uh, that's okay. Um, really, I was just kind of focused on knitting <laughs> and, and trying to move myself forward on that front because I, I felt like I was really stalled. So... Um, and that's it for spinning. Okie doke. What's finished this week? Nothing. Absolutely nothing is finished this week. Everything is still being worked on, and I have finished nothing. I even had a day off from work this week, but I had to run Mr. Mitten around, um doing errands and everything, because he's in charge of the town, uh, well, I guess, beautification. Um, so he makes sure that the Veterans Memorial is all prettied up and spruced up and replanted uh, with fresh new flowers. And uh, he's he's puts in a lot of perennials, um, which really helps the town budget, um, which I appreciate. Um but so we spent a lot of time on focused on that instead of um focusing on finishing up anything knit wise and quite frankly um spending time for our vets that's a, that's a good use of my time i i don't regret a moment of it um i regret that we were working in 90 degree heat but other than that every second was well worth every moment spent and it was hardly anything compared to the service that they've given us so there you have it in stash up down this week I neither stashed up nor stashed down although I did go through a couple of uh, balls of the uh, knit picks um, current uh, worsted weight yarn but um, nothing finished, finished, so it's still in play. Um, I also went through my needles, and I have no idea how, but I lost a couple pairs of cirques somewhere. Well, I thought they were somewhere. I just can't find them. I'm sure they'll turn up, but uh, it's highly disappointing when you're trying to start a project and you can't find the particular needles that you're looking for. And uh, I imagine that I'll end up uh, replacing them at some point, but right now I still have hope that they're just in a project bag or something, even though I've been through every single project bag. And two weeks ago I went through my stash and rearranged everything, so I absolutely know that if they're not where they're supposed to be, they're not here at all. Um, but a part of me still holds holds out hope uh, that I will find them and not have to replace yet another set of needles. Um, 
because it seems like every time I try and knit something these days, the first thing I do is go out and buy a set of needles. Either they're the wrong length or they're the wrong size. And I really just want to be able to open up my box, grab a set of needles, and start knitting. Uh, so stash up, down. No stash up, no stash down. Where I want to be, but I probably won't. Well, where I wanted to be was at the Massachusetts Sheep and Wool Fair. Uh, get, they call it the Woolcraft, Woolcraft Fair. Yeah. Um, this past weekend, my friend uh, Karen had a booth there, Periwinkle uh, Sheep, and uh, she did really well. She posted pictures on Facebook of her booth and uh, and the festivities, and it looked like so much fun. And I really wanted to be there, but um, it just wasn't going to happen. We had too much stuff going on in town that that I needed to attend to and uh that kind of took priority over uh over a wool festival which is uh you know this this happens family first um so that's where I wanted to be and I was not so I'll find something uh else to uh to wish for though so We'll take a look this week and see what, what else is going on in the area. And uh, I think there's something going on uh, upstate uh, that isn't too far away that I could uh, set my sights on. So we'll just have to take a look at the uh, festival calendar and uh, see what's on. Although I did see this cruise to Alaska and after 90 degree days, I think a knitting cruise to Alaska sounds like a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> could you imagine? In grabby pause this week, I was still obsessed with sock yarn. Um, I found one vendor that had some 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 nice yarn, uh, the cashmere. Uh, merino nylon blend that I was looking for, but it was pricey. It was um, $55 for a skein, and that is, uh, that's pricey. I, it, for that kind of money, I better love, love, love those colors. And um, they didn't have any colors that I love, love, loved, so there was uh, no stash up there. I've been looking for something that has, like, like a, a a pine green that that dark deep green with just a tint of blue in it um, that reminds me of the pine trees up in the northern peninsula of Michigan and uh, I haven't found I haven't found that color um, people have close to that color sort of that color um, but not that color. Plus, I want it to be a little bit stripy, um, you know, so it'll have interest in it as I, as I'm knitting. Um, and I just, I just haven't found it. But I've definitely moved on from the looking at just the spring colors. So that tells me that uh, my summer color choices are coming into vogue in my mind which is really good um, because after summer comes fall and with fall comes Rhinebeck so woohoo Rhinebeck um, so grabby paws still looking for sock yarn the elusive skein in dough this week it was all about the knitting spinning went really well but the knitting was kind of messed up um, I was trying to move past the socks. I really, really, really wanted to just get those heels done and move on and be done with it. Um, so I dove right in to the socks and I believe I was on heel number eight or seven, seven and eight when we, when we put them down last. And, uh, 
I don't know what was wrong with my fingers. They just wouldn't do what my brain wanted them to to do. It was just absolutely hysterically ridiculous the amount of knitting that I did to get those heels done. I could have done an, an another entire set of socks with the uh, massive amount of of knitting that, <laughs> that took place. It was the silliest, silliest thing. It was as if the socks just did not want to be knit. Um, no matter how nice I was to them or how politely I chatted with them about how wonderful it would be when they finally did get uh, all knit up, they just um, they just didn't want to go. And uh, I I have no idea. I mean, the amount of uh, the amount of redos I did on these heels was just it was just silly. Um, I counted wrong on the short rows and I made a rectangle instead of a a triangle on the heel. Um, so I had to rip it out. Uh, which, of course, when I was ripping it out, I got the yarn all tangled into a a big mess. And, and then I knit and, uh, and messed up the count again, and I had to rip it out again. Uh, then I knit and, uh, discovered that, uh, I missed a stitch. Uh, well, not missed one. I, I picked up an extra, extra stitch along the way. Uh, so I had to rip that out again. And, um, I mean, that was up to heel attempt 10. And, um, then, I, I mean, I ran out of time. I was knitting on the train, I ran out of time, so I had to set them down, which of course meant that I lost track of the count, um, which mm, gave us heel number 11, and uh, heel number 12, I skipped a stitch, on heel number 13, I dropped a stitch, um, heel number 14, I skipped four stitches in a row, and then finally I made it through on heel number 15. I was, <laughs> I was so pleased. I did it. I did it. No one could make me quit it. Um, so that gave me one heel. And uh, so I waited, and I waited, and then I did the next heel, and it went through, and and worked perfectly fine. So I thought for sure, being as bold as I am, that I was over my curse of uh, knitting mess-ups. So I went ahead and uh, selected my Rhinebeck sweater. Yes, I did. I finally found that pattern that I wanted to do and uh, queued it up in Ravelry. And I even got myself a custom fit pattern for it. So I was really, really pleased about that. I thought it was absolutely lovely and just going to be ever so charming. And I did everything right. I knit a swatch. I knit, well, I knit in three different sizes for the swatch so I could make sure that I was choosing the absolutely proper needle size and I washed the swatch and I blocked the swatch and, you know, ever so proud of myself for doing all of this wonderful amount of work just to make sure that uh, I would have a really perfect, perfect um, 
sweater for Rhinebeck, doing everything that every book says that one must do. And uh, I thought it was going to be fabulous. I took my measurements again. I checked them with my custom fit and made sure that everything was hunky-dory and, um, you know, everything I was supposed to do. I picked, I, I picked the seam air sweater, by the way. Um, and I cast on. And it was so pretty. And I was knitting away, and it was going really fast, and it was just the back, and, you know, I was thinking, wow, this is going really fast. And uh, then, you know, and it's got all the increases and decreases are built into, like, the ribbing and everything, and there was patterning and going on, and I'm using the custom fit recipe, so you have the, the recipe, you have the pattern, you have, and you're reading all of this stuff, and it's just, you know... It's mentally involving, uh, involving and, and, and it's really interesting to knit, and I'm having a really, really good time doing it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, this looks really small. But, you know, I'm not worried, because I did my swatch, and I washed my swatch, and I blocked my swatch, and I re remeasured me, and it's custom fit, so it's got to work, Right. So I finished up the first ball, and I was so happy. I was like, yes, this weekend I will have at least uh, two balls of yarn knit into my Rhinebeck 2016 sweater. And even though I've done the math, and I'm fairly certain that there's no way I can possibly finish a sweater uh, in time for Rhinebeck, um, at least I have a, a fighting chance if I can, you know, get some extra knitting time in during a three-day weekend. How wonderful is that? So I'm knitting and knitting, and and I'm looking at it, and I'm really thinking, you know, the back of the sweater does not look wide enough to cover my thigh, let alone my back. So I'm, I'm really thinking that it's, it's too small. So, you know where you're sitting there and you're knitting along and you're saying it's too small, it's too small, and yet you keep knitting and knitting. And that tiny voice inside of you keeps getting louder and louder and you ignore it. Well, that's what I was doing. And once I realized that's what I was doing, I knew it was time for me to stop knitting, get out the measuring tape, and discover the truth. And the truth of the matter was, the back of the sweater was nine inches too small. Nine inches. How was this even possible? This is a custom fit sweater pattern that I had swatched for, that I had measured for. How was it even possible to be nine freaking inches too small? Well, I'll tell you how it was possible. Even though I did the swatch and I blocked it and I washed it, the gauge when I was actually knitting the sweater, and even though I knit in the same pattern with the same needles on the sweater, my tension changed when I was knitting the the larger back of the sweater. Um, so instead of having five stitches per inch, instead of having 4.5 stitches per inch, I had five stitches per inch. Um, and it shrunk the sweater down. If you read through the pattern and you work out the math with the 4.5, everything works out and it measures out right and it's absolutely perfect. But that's not the gauge I was getting when I was actually knitting. Um, so I had knit a about a foot on the back of the sweater and it will never fit me unless I'm like reborn because it's you know sized for an infant um, so after much thought and much del deliberation I decided I could either burn it in the wood stove 
chop it into tiny bits and feed it to the birds, throw it out, or eventually just fold it in half and make a little pillow out of it, which actually is what I'll probably end up doing. Um, but that will not be, I will not be wearing seam air for Rhinebeck. I chose a different pattern. I chose Cahoots, um, which is a cute little cardigan with a tiny bit of detail on it and lots of stock in it. And I went over the finished measurements very carefully and realized that if I... If I don't make some modifications in the sizings, it's really not going to fit me the way I want to. So I'm going to have to make some modifications in, in the sizings as I knit along. But I'm not going to go through the whole custom fit thing. I'm just going to do the math myself. And maybe that way I'll understand it better. And uh, it'll absolutely keep, keep me paying attention to what size I'm knitting as I go forward. So uh, I balled up, I caked up another ball of uh, yarn, and um, I started knitting the ribbing. So I'm about a little over halfway through on the ribbing, but, oh, I swear, just when you thought you couldn't make a bigger mistake, um, that one was a doozy. That's uh, 330 yards of... Uh, of good times, and and it's not like I, I had mistakes that I had made on on the seam air. I mean, there was one point where I did not twist the ribbing as I was knitting across, so I knit back twenty six stitches, twisting and, and re knitting and twisting the rib. Oh, oh, two rows down, by the way. Um, for 26 stitches, I repaired that one little section, one one little uh, drop down at a time. Um, it, there, there, I started the increase wrong. I did, I did a decrease instead of an increase. I did increases instead of decreases. I mean, there were 101 little mistakes, including the cast on. Um, so maybe seam air was just not meant to be because of so many mistakes and I know I've gone on <laughs> well beyond my self-imposed two minute window for this segment but oh if you had only been there um, I think you would have taken a flamethrower to it I I'm still debating that I don't know if I want to rest my head on that <laughs> as a pillow uh, putting it in the wood stove doesn't doesn't seem like a very bad idea at the moment I, I think I need some distance, but my my new my new sweater has started nicely and uh, knock on wood um, that will continue to move forward, and that's what I messed up this week. Oh, where I'll be home and work, work and home. It's going to be an exciting week. We are starting getting gearing up for the garden tour. Um, and that takes a lot of time uh, for our fundraising, as well as getting all of the um, brochures together and and everything like that. Um, I am the president of the garden club, so I do have to make sure my garden looks up to snuff. But once a year, we open up our garden, and uh, we get some of the really fancy gardens in town to open up theirs. These are gardens that you cannot tell there's a garden from the street, so we call it a hidden garden tour. And uh, so I'll be working on that. Um, the garden tour is on July 2nd. And until that's over, um, that's kind of where my extra focus will be. Um, so, home and work, work and home, and uh, thinking about the garden tour. Well, hopefully my hands will be uh, knitting, knitting, knitting. In questions this week, um, Kath asks, Do you color coordinate your project with your project bag? How do you decide which color to choose if your yarn is multi-striping? If you don't color coordinate, how do you choose which project bag to use? 
Sometimes I am so stymied about the bag yarn thing that I'm stalled starting my project bags. Please help. Well, Kath, I do color coordinate my project bags with my projects. I find it makes it easier for me to pull out the project that I want when I'm in a hurry. Um, if my yarn is multi-striping, like, for example, the socks of many heels, uh, they have burgundies, whites, oranges, and then I choose the color that speaks to me from the yarn. Um, for the sock of many heels, I refer to them as orange socks. So my project bag has orange in it. Of course, um, I guess a better example would be the Rhinebeck 2016 sweater, which is a solid cranberry, and it is in a cranberry uh patterned um, project bag. For my sock bag, it actually has a lot of different colors on it, um, but it's always the one where I keep my socks in it, um, so I know that's my sock bag. Um, so even though, it, yes, it is color-coordinated, um, it's really more of my sock bag, so, but like I said, for the sweater, it's definitely color coordinated with the project. Um, if I didn't color coordinate, um, I imagine I would choose the bag based on the project size um, because after all, at the end of the day, the project does have to fit into the bag. Um, if you find that you are delaying your projects because of bag issues, I would suggest that you just grab a grocery bag and stuff your project right into that. Once you see your beautiful project shoved into a plastic grocery bag, this should you should give you the impetus you need to sh choose the rightful project bag for the project, um, because no one wants to see their uh, beautiful, beautiful project sitting in a used grocery bag. I hope you find this answer helpful. And uh, have a great week. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.